Well, sorry I haven't updated you guys in a little while on this Toyota Hilux with the Tesla motor. Uh, but I've been driving it daily for, oh, uh, well, since the last video that I posted up, which is about a half a year ago. Um, since then, it's been great. I've put about 10,000 miles on it now. And I have rebuilt the motor once because the differential failed on it. Um, but other than that, it's been pretty good. It's been a lot of fun driving this thing. So here it is, the 1972 Toyota Hilux that is electric, Tesla powered. So I'll give you a little tour of this thing. A lot of uh, obviously what's underneath it. So there is the rebuilt Tesla motor in it has about oh, 3,000 miles on it now, something like that. Um, rebuilt Tesla motor, rebuilt, or a brand new differential in it. And there you can see the battery pack. So I got a lot of questions on Instagram where the battery is, and it's right there above the motor. And that's kind of why the motor hangs a little bit low on this thing. Not too low, it's got some clearance. Um, but that's why it hangs low because this motor or, uh, excuse me, this battery pack is above it. And of course it's above that, but underneath the stock bed. So there is not a whole lot of room for that motor. That's partially why this thing's lifted because I wanted to get the motor higher. Then I ended up realizing how cool it looks lifted. So there's that, that's who were there. Those are my QA1 shocks, they're hot rod shocks. Uh, that's what I got on the rear end of this. So that works pretty well. Here's this uh, setup from the other side and the Dadeon axle that I made. Um, I believe in the, yeah, the first video I did, I uh, went over how I built this thing. Basically just a bunch of box tubing welded together holding two Tesla Model 3 hubs. And then the axles are Tesla Model 3 and Model S that are carefully welded together. <laughs> uh, knock on wood, they haven't broke yet. Um, I have a technique for doing that. It's all wrong, but it worked. And also, I wanted to point out this uh, bar right here. That is a stock Toyota um, proportion valve. It has this uh, long arm that goes to the rear end and normally that would be bolted to the stock uh, rear end. And what it does is when your suspension, uh, when you have a lot of weight in the bed of a Toyota pickup, the suspension obviously sags down. And so that bar pushes up on that bias valve and gives more rear uh, brake proportioning as opposed to the front. So I uh, I didn't want to lose any of that stuff because I have a stock Toyota brake uh, master in here. And so I kept all of that stuff and uh, just bolted it back to the DDM and made that work. So you can see that's where the battery ends right here. And that's right where my cab starts, uh, or ends, I guess you would say. Um, don't mind my messy wiring. Uh, right there is the high voltage junction box. And I have a bunch of, uh, well, I have 400 volts coming from the battery pack uh, back there to this junction box. And that junction box has uh, three different things coming out of it. One 400 volt source for the heater, and that's controlled by a contactor, which is controlled by a toggle switch in the truck. And the other two are going to the DC-DC and the charger up front. And this is where I have my high voltage fuses as well. So in case any of those pop, I crawl under here and, and change them. 
And then you can see it's oddly vacant up here. There's usually an engine, a transmission, uh, but that's all gone. Oh, one other thing, if you notice, why does a 1972 Toyota pickup have torsion bars on it? Well, there's a secret. This thing's actually sitting on a 1989 Toyota pickup chassis. And I did that because I wanted all the modern stuff, all the modern running gear, modern brakes. And when I need brakes and rotors, I can go to O'Reilly's or AutoZone or Napa and go pick up my Ray Bistos special brake pads that would be in stock. So there's a lot of reasoning, but that's one of them. And you can see that. There's all the torsions. Okay, let's take a look at the front. So here we are in the front end, and you can see that there is a lack of a gas engine. Amazing. Anyway, so to begin with, I guess we could start with this side. On this side, we have the DC-DC, and this is uh, a stock Tesla DC-DC that came out of a Model S. And you have high voltage coming in here, low voltage 12 volt coming out of there, and uh, the enable wire that comes out of there. And that's all you need for that thing to work. I guess you could call that your uh, electric car alternator. That's what that thing does. Gives you 12 volts power. And I get, I get asked this question a lot. Why does an electric car have 12 volts? Well, glad he asked. It has 12 volts because all the contactors and everything inside of a car is still 12 volts. Um, as far as the windshield wiper motors, the headlights, your blinkers, everything else on a car that normally runs on 12 volts stays 12 volt because I really wouldn't want 400 volts going to my headlights and my windshield wiper motor and all all that stuff because uh that could get interesting if um you know anyway so there's that dc dc that's my 12 volt uh lawn and garden battery from uh, o'reilly's it really is a lawn and garden i don't know if you can see it super start yeah that's for mowers anyway um right here is a model 3 horn so i Got this from a Model 3, and it's actually, there's two horns in every car, or in those cars. Uh, one's a high note, one's a low note, and I only took the high note because I like the little, you know, deet deet sound. So, <laughs> there's that. So over here is a Tesla Model S uh, charger. And this charger takes AC power, either 220 or... Uh, or 110 volt AC and converts it to 400 volt DC for the battery pack. And so that's in there. It's a 10 kilowatt charger, which is really awesome and kind of lame, but mostly awesome because uh, most, most chargers don't do 10 kilowatts. Um, six is about the limit for level two, but if I get to a Tesla destination charger, then I can use all 10 of this uh, magic box, which is cool. Speaking of cooling, there's water lines on it. There's also water lines on the DC-DC. Why? Well, because all this stuff is water-cooled in these. The charger, or I mean, sorry, the DC-DC and the charger are water-cooled. And obviously the motor is water-cooled. And I have that all on one circuit. So here is a stock Toyota four-wheel drive uh, radiator that I used because it bolted in, so why not? And again, O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Napa, you name it, I can get one. Down there, I don't know if you can see it or not, here it is, is the water pump. That's a stock Tesla water pump, and you feed that little guy 12 volts, and it turns on, and 
makes water fountains if, uh, if you don't have your hose clamps tight. So it goes from the radiator down. There's a port on the other side here, down in there, down to the uh, intake of the water pump, out of the pump, to the charger, through the charger, out to the motor, back from the motor, through the DC-DC, loops back around, comes back into the radiator and cools everything. So motor, DC, DC, charger all on the same circuit. None of this stuff's gonna get hot with a big radiator like that that used to cool uh, the almighty 22R and uh, in this truck in particular, an 18RC. Anyway, yeah, this box is from Home Depot. That's my frunk. I made a uh, frame for it. Um, it works pretty good. And uh, once again, if this thing breaks or blows out the bottom, I can, uh, I can go to Home Depot, which is awesome, and get another one. And if I want, I could put a lid on it. So anyway, that's why I'm using this. They're cheap. It's a frunk. I really don't care, but I do. So there it is. And I carry my uh, 220 charger to <laughs> actually a whole charge station with me, just in case. And uh, extra 12 volt and air pump and all that fun stuff. That little guy right there is just my overflow for the radiator. And my stock brake master. Yes, the booster's on there. No, I don't have a vacuum pump on it. It's, it doesn't really bother me. I don't need it. I can uh, push that brake in pretty hard, uh, as hard as the vacuum of this truck could have done. So, and uh, with, in other words, I can lock the, I can lock these 31s with, uh, with just pressing it very hard, which is good enough for me. You don't really want to skid at all. Anyway, there's that. Oh, hang on. Let's take a look inside. Okay. The interior. I don't think I've showed too much of this. So I have a couple of Kirky seats in here. Um, race edition. That's all they make, I think. They suck. My back is really screwed up right now because of these things, but they look really cool. And there's a problem with these little trucks from Japan in the 70s. They're really tiny. And I had to get this seat all the way back. And that's why the back here, that's why I got these Kirkies because they're so thin. I was able to push the seat all the way back. Inside here, this is the T2C. That's uh, what's controlling the motor. And that's from EV controls. So the little magic box that says, yes, test the motor. You can do burnouts now. Don't worry about anything. You're still in a stock Toyota or stock Tesla. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. That is an iPad. I know. 1972 Toyota pickup, iPad. Anyway, I don't care. I want some modern, you know, gizmos in here. So, what's on here? Let's take a look. This is how my dash looks. Um, you have all these different parameters. You can see motor temp over there. That's usually talking about, uh, oh, what is that looking at? inverter temp, or I'm sorry, is it? Oh yeah, it's looking at inverter temperature over there. To the right is voltage, pack voltage. That first gauge on the right over here is RPM of the motor. That gauge over there is the kilowatts going to the motor. So basically your, your torque, if you want to look at it that way. And yeah, there's all sorts of things on here. Um, it's kind of cool, I can see Literally everything. I have my 12 volt. I can see if uh, if my DC DC is broken or not. All sorts of good stuff in here. Peak amps, uh, tutor, and whatever. I floored it. Anyway, um, this is my emergency stop. I've been told that oh you don't need that. The first day I drove this, I got a little squirrely and I punched that thing as hard as I could 
yeah i need it um a dash delete i guess you would call it um carbon fiber piece of plate and then a cool racing steering wheel because why not that column is from the 89 chassis i had to move it up and um well just up and away from me up up and away door speakers that i had to install now, obviously these trucks didn't come with that sort of thing here's a cool little thing so here is the uh, stock heater box that i completely rebuilt because it had mold and all kinds of good you know gizmos in there anyway pulled the stock heater core out of it put it in a smart car heater core that uh fit really well surprisingly and then i powder coated the whole thing rebuilt it and this sucker makes this cab screaming hot so it's nice during the winter i like it so glove compartment other door panel other speaker works great okay well uh that about concludes it for this video it's really bright out here i should have run uh, sunglasses but i didn't anyway i hope the, that was inspiring and that you got some information about how to build one of these things or at least some ideas about how to do it maybe in future videos i'll do stuff on uh more on how some of this the components in these things work uh other than that thanks for watching let me know maybe in the comments down below of uh what things you you guys want to learn about so uh till then thanks bye